This is an all audio core data tutorial for iOS. Um, no short tutorials exist, so uh, at least not ones for iPhone and iPad programming. So I figured I'd make one. Uh, I don't have a video recorder on my Mac, so um, don't worry, my memory is pretty good. So core data consists of three major components, and that would be the context, which is basically your database that you run around altering in memory. Um, if you've been programming for a while, and hopefully you have, um, context is a lot like a pointer, um, just a variable pointer, except it points to an entire database and does a whole bunch of cool things for you. The next object would be the persistent data store, and this is the actual database. Um, the, usually the reason why you use core data is this is the database as far as it gets stored. Um, so this would be the SQL file or the XML file or the binary file. Um, of course, you probably know XML isn't easy to use on iOS just yet. So the last object um, is kind of an in-betweener. It's necessary, though. It's called the model. And uh, you usually create this graphically. And all it is is the schema of the database. It tells your context what it looks like. And it tells your um, tells the coordinator, which is another object, um, that determines how to communicate between the context and then the physical store. It tells the persistent store coordinator um, how to store it. So basically you have a model and you don't have to worry about it. All you have to do is create it unless you're going to do it programmatically, but there's almost no reason to do that for a beginning uh, programmer who's probably needing this tutorial. So yeah, there's a model, the context, and um, coordinator and then the persistent store. The only one you're really going to pay attention to is the context itself. That is the one you mess with and then there's a few things that go with that. So to get started, um, now the reason you don't need to know about it is because it's done for you so long as you start a window-based application and then there's a little checkbox that says use core data for storage. I'm not going to go into the details on how to use the modeler, but there are plenty of tutorials and many quick references on it. Um, just the first chapter, two chapters of um, some good books like Core Data and Pro iOS Core Data or something. Uh, you can find them on Safari and uh, Amazon. Anyway, um, you create your model in the modeler, um, and that basically is the model. And uh, then, after you create the model, click on the entity and you make sure that you click on the entity otherwise this will not pop up but file new um, or add right click on files and add file to project and you'll get a managed object model and it'll automatically subclass and create um, a version of your entity where you can alter properties instead of using key value coding um, let's see after you do that um, an easy way um, is to like an easy way to mess with it it's in the app delegate itself um, that's where we're gonna shove in the code to see if the properties are there how to add to them edit them etc so an application did finish launching with options you will want to create first something called an entity and this is an NS entity huh, I forgot the name just a second and it's entity description. That's it. And an entity description is basically they um, serves a couple of functions, but it basically says this is what person looks like, and you need to grab it out of the context. So you do NS entity description, uh, create a pointer to it, so asterisk, and then name it anything. Usually entity for the tutorials equals bracket. NS entity description, entity for name, and then uh, if you named it person, you'd say at person using an NS string. And then in context, and then you type self.manage object context if you're in the app delegate. End um, bracket, and then the, don't forget the semi at the end, so the semicolon. All right, now that you know you have a reference to what it's supposed to look like, you have to create an object that looks like it. So this is just like um, if you were doing object-oriented programming, it's just like creating an object but without initializing the values. So you're still going to have to initialize the values. 
So it's a little weird because uh, the name is almost exactly the same, but you're going to create a NS. Well, you could either do NS manage object if you don't subclass, but since you subclassed, um, the name of whatever you created the file with. So uh, when you created the NS manage object, if it was a person, it'll say person. So you say person asterisk, give it a name equals, and then um, typecast it so, or just cast it. Uh, so open parentheses person uh, asterisk close parentheses and then open bracket ns managed object and no sorry this is ns entity description and then um, you write insert into that's what it begins with just looking at stack overflow here somebody with something I was looking at Okay, if you type in insert into, um, I'm sure you can find it um, since I don't have too much time. But basically, you create the object using another, using a class method of NS entity description. Um, so essentially, you have a pointer to an empty object, but it's a full object. It's not just a description. After that, you're going to um, fill the values. So if you add person name, uh, you say, and you've subclassed it, say person dot name equals um, at and then Marcy um, for the NS string. Or you could say um, person set value Marcy for key name. Uh, well, you wouldn't say name, you'd say. Hopefully you would give it a different name than name, but uh, like person name. So remember, there's keys that you don't want to use because they're already used by core data. OK, so essentially you really just created the object um, You'll notice that it says in context at the end of that function. Um, I guess it's a method call. <laughs> I'm used to C. Anyway, um, once you do that, it literally inserts it into the context. So if this was a database, you literally just added a, you not only added a row um, or an entity to the table, but you also, uh, you have a pointer to it. So unlike a normal database, you don't need to keep track of things um, using an increment operator or a primary key. And if you don't know what those are, don't worry. Um, since in this entity description insert into, uh, but basically inserting into the context gives you an object back, which is a reference to the object you just created. Um, so this makes it really easy to add and delete objects because uh, saving to the actual database just reflects what you have uh, in memory. And this might sound more complex than it is. All I'm basically saying is what you have is what you have. And when you save it, that's what you have later, or that's what you've got. So to save it, all you have to do um, is call the save function. And it's kind of encapsulated for you if you opened with a window-based application and check the use core data for storage. You'll notice a function on the application delegate called save context. So self space save context, and you are done. Um, when you open the program up again, you can grab those items. All right, and now for a quick rundown on how to use those items, um, or rather how to grab those items. They are grabbed with something called a fetch request, and you create the fetch request by saying ns fetch request, and then asterisk request equals ns fetch request alloc in it. After that, a fetch request um, carries, I believe, arrays of two different types of things, and these are optional, um, but one's a sort descriptor, and that just determines whether it's ascending or descending and what value you want to ascend or descend. And another one is, uh, is it, uh, NS predicate. And that's basically a regular expression that determines uh, things that should be in what you're getting. So like things that begin with A, things that begin with B, things that sound like this or look like that. If you're familiar with regular expressions, then you should know how to deal with it. Um, you don't need them. They're both optional. 
but one thing you do need for sure is yet another um, thing called the entity name and there's different ways to get it but basically you're going to have to add to the fetch request or actually set uh, rec um, the actual code is request it's assuming request is an NS fetch request request space set entity name or something like that. Ah, if you start typing in set um, it'll show up and it just says it asks so uh, what am I supposed to get so you're after persons in this case so you'd say set entity persons or set entity and then entity dot or entity name um, if you're using any code um, and I should mention by the way I've been talking that this um, video assumes you've tried to read a tutorial or read a few tutorials and think you get it and probably are getting it because it's a lot simpler than that it's made out to be um, just to get it running so the important things to remember are all you need is a fetch request with setting the entity name um, the NS predicate and the sort descriptors are added to the fetch request um, so you just have to think of that order kind of like a tree fetch request at the top and then that the the two branches are the NS predicate and NS sort descriptor after that you will once again grab the context remember you're grabbing the context you're still not dealing with the persistent store which is the SQL database itself or the model or the thing that coordinates between them called the coordinator um, so all you do is you say you grab the context and let's see execute fetch request I believe is the actual code I haven't looked at my screen and my screen is blank anyway so I apologize if this is getting on anyone's nerves as far as not remembering things very fast um, okay so in 12 minutes I believe I covered more than many iPhone core data tutorials that never actually get to the iPhone um, and like I said do all this in the application delegate otherwise you're going to need to send a reference to the manage object context to all your um, view controllers that are below your app delegate. Um, I highly recommend doing that in code because I just had issues with doing that um, using delegation and interface builder and linking things uh, just simply by the order of how things get initialized. Oh, speaking of how things get initialized, make sure you call um, self.manageViewController um, self.nsManageObjectContext um, self.manageObjectContext make sure you call that just so it gets initialized before you start doing any of these fetch requests or anything um, that's really important um, especially if you do create another view that's going to use it and it has its own view controller uh, that is actually it that is the entirety of getting something up and running and adding and saving uh, the last thing would be delete I guess and like I said you have references to the objects when you create the NS entity um, to begin with and the reason now you'll know why I stress that is because since it's in memory and memory just is a reflection of what's going to go into the database anyway if you simply use the NS array uh, delete command uh, in this case it's a just a let's see it's from the context so you grab the context so self dot manage object context and then space delete and then just pass that a reference to the object you don't want anymore and after that call save context and the object is gone and the new form of the database will be saved and that is the all audio tutorial I will script something make it a lot easier to handle and uh, easier on the eyes as well and I'll try to show you uh, so I don't get all confused again okay but that is it for now hope you enjoy and if you have any complaints about this I do too feel free alright <laughs>